Hello everyone and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles to people throughout the world. Today we have Maria Eilith Wood and Annie Winter. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it right over to you guys and you can introduce yourself and, and uh, talk a little bit about what you're going to discuss today. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm really super excited to be here and super scared to be here <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and I'm not, I'm, I don't think um, I don't think the scared really is, is cutting the mustard really but um, <laughs> I'm just um, I am really excited to be here and I'm really excited to be having this conversation with Andy because we, whenever we have a, a conversation it's um, I just I just love the conversations that we have. So um, I'm, I think I'm supposed to say something about myself, aren't I? Just at this point. So I'm um, Maria Eilif Wood. Uh, I live in Leicestershire in the UK. Um, I've been around the principles just for a, a, a few years since about 2013. I was blessed to meet Andy and Steph, who's also with us today. Um, uh, through the Healing the World program with Dickon, which was a, just an absolute joy to be around. Um, and the principles have made such a huge difference in my life and kind of took over my work. Um, I didn't decide that I was going to use the principles in my work. They kind of infiltrated my work and took over. So, And it's a topic that I can talk about all day, every day. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for me. How about you, Andy? Um, my name, yeah, my name is Andy Winter, and I um, I live in Vermont and and uh, soon Long Island, New York. And we're moving there uh, for my daughter to attend high school. Um, and I've been in this conversation uh, about the three Ps for, I guess, around twenty six years now. So I had a chance to work directly with Sydney Banks and you know, George and Linda Pransky and Roger Mills. And um, most of my time has been spent in the field of education. Um, we started a couple of different high schools with the principles really at the heart of the curriculum and the culture. And more recently in my life, I've stepped out of that and, and have been really pursuing or sharing uh, the principles as my principal line of work. Um, and um, I'm just really delighted to be here too and so glad you know folks folks are here online and it is it's always a delight to to uh to speak with you maria and um you know i found myself just as soon as you open my your mouth i found my eyes welling up just because i get so touched by um by the by the feeling you have and the and the appreciation and gratitude you have for how how how, how this understanding has affected your life and um and i, I and i feel really similarly um and i our topic, can I just jump similarly. into the topic? <laughs> yes, can I, can I, similarly, yes. Um, I've been speaking only Spanish lately too, so uh, it's really strange for me to be speaking this much English. Um, but can I just jump right in, Maria, and introduce mm -hmm. the topic? So yeah. when we were discussing what to discuss and, and everything we, every conversation we had, um, that sort of the idea of wholeness came up. And, um, meaning like non-separate, meaning um, nothing missing. And, and, it, and so I, my daughter just trained, my daughter's 14 and she trained really hard this morning. She was training since nine o'clock. So it was about three and a half hours. And we were walking over to this facility, which has a, um, they allowed me to use this entire conference room to do this conversation. So I'm sitting in front of this massive conference room with no one here except my iPad, which is kind of funny. But um, anyway, we're walking over and she said, so what's this talk about? And I said, wholeness. Uh, she said, and it was just after she got to tell me how cool it is that Taylor Swift is coming out with a new album and all these things she's excited to do when she gets back home. She's been away for months and months. And, uh, and then without skipping a beat, she said, oh, that's a cool topic, wholeness. You mean, you mean like people aren't missing anything and they're not broken? And I was like, I was like yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, so my daughter's kind of summed up, I think, in, in one sentence. Um, 
any message that I would hope to possibly share at all today, which is, um, which I think is just that, is that, you know, to lead off with what this is really about is, it's about the fact that there really is no separation between, between um, you and I, between me and the earth, between, between anything, and, 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 that, and, that, and that we are whole, we are connected, and, and that, our, that our, our innate health and our innate wisdom and the, and, and, and the profound like, intelligence of life that, that we are a part of is, um, is ever-present ever present and we can't be um it can't be diminished it can't be corrupted it can't be destroyed um and as a result we can't really be broken um in any in, in any way however we do have the capacity to think we are mm-hmm. which is which is um sort of where our conversations began um and i and i guess for me you know I, 26 years ago when I first heard um, someone speak about this understanding, um, you know, I had a series of really significant changes in my worldview. In, like kind of one of those instant, whoa, find your footing, things aren't how they, I thought they were kind of experiences. And, and um, I, was try, I was trying to describe this to Maria yesterday. But it was, um, you know, the first was someone was talking to me about, or to a group about how, how the past is kind of, is, is irrelevant, not kind of irrelevant. The past is, is insignificant. It's no, it's no longer present. And the future will never be present. And that we really only live, we really only have this moment, which made sense to me intellectually. And then they were also talking about the thought and, our, and the fact that we create our experience via our thinking. And somehow or another, a few hours after they were done talking, I saw in large what they were talking about. And I had this, you know, that this feeling of like, oh my gosh, things, the past really isn't significant. And I really have been making up my experience moment to moment for my entire life. And so is everyone else. And, and then, and then the, 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 those, so those were two massive insights for me. And then, and then the third one was my brain just, or my, not my brain, I saw, if that's true, all this work I'd been doing for so long to, um, to improve myself, to make myself whole, to um, fix things that I thought were broken, you know, growing up in an alcoholic family. And I was going to meetings. I mean, I was a happy guy, more or less, but I, I was going to like, um, you know, adult children of alcoholics meetings and I was healing my inner child. And I was, I was in these men's groups where we were doing the good work of like, like becoming good men as opposed to bad men. And I was, I was doing so much work to sort of be better. And I saw in an instant that there was no work I needed to do. And I just wept. I mean, I, rem- I just remember um, it was the first time in a long, long time in my life where I just realized that there was nothing I needed that I didn't have. And that, um, That changed my life. Mm-hmm. So from that moment on, um, this conversation has been a principal part of my, um, my existence, inescapably. <laughs> so that's my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I, I suppose my um, experience of wholeness kind of... Um, crept up on me um i had a my first significant three principles insight was about and and you you're going to remember this because we had a right old laugh about this when we worked together uh, not so long ago it's like my first insight was like i am the intelligence of life Hmm. but i never realized the significance of that at the time and it was years later um through writing about that that moment that i realized the experience of it and the the whole feeling of it was like at some somewhere along the line 
this idea that I was broken and needed fixing kind of fell away somewhere. It kind of, I didn't have this experience where suddenly I felt like I was, a, I was whole, I wasn't broken. Um, but somewhere along the line, you kind of noticed that that had gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> like that that feel <laughs> that feeling of of not not feeling whole had had, had gone missing um, and it was it wasn 't that i didn 't have this idea intellectually even before I came across mm. the principles that people were not broken because I actually in a previous book that 's not principles related, I actually said that one of my guiding principles as, as a coach was that people are not broken and therefore don't need to be fixed at all. But I had a big insight when we were on the Healing the World program where I realized that even though intellectually I had this idea that people were not broken and therefore didn't need fixing, but the way that I worked with people very, very subtly was like, I'm looking for what to fix. And, and if, if, if somebody had said to me that that's what I was doing, I probably wouldn't have, I would have gone, no, no, I know people are not broken. And, and it, was, um, it was such a subtle thing. And I think part of that was to do with, I, I didn't really know that I wasn't broken and didn't need fixing. So it kind of didn't translate to other people. Because the way that I've found it is that once I know something to be true for me, then it becomes true for everybody else as well. In that, I, I don't mean that in a, um, I, I, I don't know what way I don't mean it in, but in, I, I don't mean it to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, if, if, all this, if all this good stuff is true for me, that I'm not whole, I'm not broken, I don't need fixing. Once I know that's true for me, then it because it's true for everybody. Hmm. So it kind of crept up on me, and then I started to realise that that feeling that I'd lived with pretty much my whole life that there was something wrong with me, that there's something inadequate about me. Um, had gone and it comes back every now and again <laughs> comes back and and kind of tests me out it kind of um it wants to see it's almost like it wants to see and, and even as i say it there's a it makes it there's an it that isn't real but something comes back to me every so often to seemingly reinforce my awareness that this thinking that i have going on about not being broken is not real Hmm. about this thinking I have about being broken is not real. That's huge, Maria. Sorry, there's sirens in the background here, sorry. <laughs> and you know the conversation, we were having a conversation yesterday um, about not being separate, about how we're not separate. And I know in the conversation I said yesterday, it's like, that's, that's kind of on the edge of, of where I'm at. It's like this believing and this knowing that we're not separate. And then last night I was having a conversation. I, I, was, I wasn't doing anything, but this, I remembered this moment a few years ago when I was at a, a classical music concert and there was a, a big orchestra. And I remember having this experience of being nothing and everything at the same time. And I'd completely forgotten about that experience. Wow. And it's, it's like for me, I have to pay attention to those moments because I skip over them, not realizing the significance of them. It's like that first mm. insight that I had. I kind of skip over them, not realizing they, they import of them and and then when i notice that and then notice other fragments of time when i know what we're talking about here about not being separate hmm.
Yeah, what you what you were saying about um working with people really struck me because I find that um, I sometimes still do that, or with my daughter or something. You know, I, I'll I it's it's it is it's 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 um it's so fascinating to see how I'll look at something in a in in, in in, or someone in a way where it looks like to me they need something they don't have and I'm supposed to help provide that which mm -hmm. you know if that's your job um, that's pretty tough work right because we can't do that like we, that's not our job and we can't do that I can't provide people with anything except maybe a, a little bit of a mirror or a little bit of a window or or, or just a chance to um, to have a, a conversation looking looking in the direction of where our experience comes from as opposed to what we've done in, in, in innocently in creating our experience, you know, sort of looking in the other direction. But the moment I, I get lost in the, in the, in the, um, in the, in what's downstream from the person in their actions or in their concerns or in their worries or in their insecurities or in their addictions. And the moment I get at all interested in that, I've, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking in the wrong direction mm. and I always need to, and I, and I, and I need to bring it back. There's going to be some noise here for a second. So you're going to have to jump in, Maria. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I really, um, get what you're saying though about, um, forgetting because it's really easy. I even did it with my sister just an hour ago. If she's feeling really stressed. I mean, I don't talk to my sister about the principles um, because it just hasn't, she hasn't expressed an interest yet. And she's feeling really stressed and I could feel myself really wanting to um, really point her in the direction of not feeling stressed and where stress comes from. But I knew I wasn't coming from a place of knowing that she's not broken. So just in that moment, you know, I kind of I have a bit of a, a slight conversation, but I don't, I don't keep the conversation going because I know that, that I'm in that place of not, not believing that she's not broken in some way. Yeah, it's only a small thing, but... And, and a lot of my work, I mean, I do quite a, a lot of work with coaches and I do quite a lot of work with leaders. And, and what I found is that the more that we appoint people in the direction of their inner wisdom, who they really are, their wholeness, that's the thing that really makes the difference. So it used to be that when I first came across the principles, I think I talked about thought more than anything. And then somewhere along the line, it switched and I, and more often than not start with mind I mean I don't have a I don't have a like a strategy or an agenda and or an order in which I work with people I kind of sit with them and and hopefully fall into that that feeling and more often than not pointing in the direction of mind before I do anything else But there's a part of me <laughs> that really wants to take the credit when we see the transformation take place in somebody's face. It's a really, it's a really um, seductive thing. Like I was saying yesterday, I'm writing at the moment. And uh, a couple of days ago, a, an amazing piece of work came through. And, and today I wrote a piece for my sister. Um, and, and it was, you know, I could see what a beautiful piece of, of writing it is. But I know that it, as, as much as I would love to, I, I, I really know that it didn't come from, it didn't come from here. It didn't come from my intellect. It didn't come from my ego. My ego would like to take credit for it. But, and I, I see how, particularly with the writing recently, I really see how when I just stay present to the writing without any idea about what I'm going to write about, what comes onto the page is just amazing. And it comes, it comes from, from that. It, it, 
it comes from that place that has, has complete wholeness because the work is per perfect as it as it comes through. And even as I say that, this little voice is going like this at me. But I also know that that's more and more I know that that voice is there. but it's of no consequence. Yeah, I love what you were saying about writing and when you talked about it yesterday too and kind of your astonishment about looking at what you just did and realizing you really can't take credit for it. You can't, because we can't take credit for that either. I mean, and then, you know, that's, that's one of those good news, bad news things is because that means we also, we don't have to take credit for anything. Because mm. it's not really a game like that. You know, that's not really the game of life. It's not about credit and debit. It's about it's about showing up and um and and with the with the recognition that that every moment in my existence i'm given what i need that's perfect for this moment mm -hmm. that's perfect for this moment i mean i was just watching tennis players you know these all these kids training here and um and they train really hard and and um and then you, you watch how they train and you watch how much fun they have training and how hard they work and how they focus. And then, and then for many of them, even though they're very good, when, as soon as they start playing a match, everything changes because now it's real to them, right? They have this idea that now it's performance time. It's somehow different in their heads. And, uh, and, uh, and it's really no different. Like they're given the same opportunity moment to moment to just show up and play with what they have. You know, play with their years of practice, play with their intuition, play with, play with their, the joy that they have. But, it, but the moment they get a little bit serious about it, you can see them pull in. And then I'm watching my daughter play, em, Amelia, who, who, I mean, she just loves tennis and she loves playing, like competing as much as she does practicing. And, and she does it the same way, sort mm -hmm. of. It's not quite reckless abandon, but, it, but it's, it's very free. Yeah. You know, it's very, very free when she plays a match. And as a result, like if you, if you, if you saw two, the two, two people warming up, you know, one might have better strokes and move better. And you'd think, wow, that, you know, this is going to be a tough one for her. But really, it's sort of the player that, that, that just enjoys the moment tends to access a greater level of their own ability in that mm. moment for what they're doing and as a result if we win or lose they have a better experience you know, they have a more enjoyable experience and they learn more so their learning curve just is steeper and steeper and steeper and i've seen that in in in, in emmy and and i've also just seen you know the difference in what happens at key moments in matches where you know she'll play a tiebreaker the same as she plays the first point of a match because it's just another there's just one more ball to hit there's yeah. one more ball to chase down there's one more chance to see what she can do and when you have that without without anything on the result without anything any worry or about the result we just um it looks like we perform at a higher level than our abilities which is of course absurd <laughs> right yeah. but that's what it looks like yeah um, and that's what it feels like sometimes too. Like you, when you wrote, you look back and you're like, "Wow, that wasn't really me. And mm -hmm. it wasn't really you because you let go of you in order yeah. for something much greater than you to show up. Yeah. And I just think that, that fact that that's always there all the time in every situation I'm in, no matter what. And it doesn't mean that suddenly I'm going to have the skills to become a pilot because the plane is going down it doesn't it's not like you know it's not like the matrix where i plug in and i get those skills mm. but in that moment you know I, I have the capacity to 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 do whatever i can to affect this kind of to be of service to the moment i'm in mm. that's what it is to me yeah and so if it's a bunch of people who are scared on a plane 
you know, there may not be anything I can do to prevent us from crashing. Or maybe there is, I don't know. But something will occur to me mm. that, that's, that's of greater use than, hopefully, uh, a time something will occur to me <laughs> that, that might be of great use. Um, and, 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 and I guess the other thing that always comes with that for me is a feeling of, um, of connection, of, of, of the, the, my ideas of me are gone in those moments. Like I'm not Andy as a, as a separate entity, as a, there's, I'm not really aware of Andy anymore because I'm, I'm so busy being yeah. that I'm not self-conscious about it. Yeah. And, um, and it's just to know that's always there. Um, that's massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, musicians, like you just look around, everyone's doing babies, do it all the time, right? They can't help it. They're just in the world, in the moment, being, who they are because they haven't made up ideas about themselves yet. And, mm -hmm. and you can see, I mean, I think you're right, Maria, that like, I think so often we'll, we'll see things in the world that are really profound, but they're actually so ordinary. We yeah. sort of skip by them. And then it's like the bothers that we end up paying attention to the troubles that we think we see that we end up, you know, like giving energy to, and we miss the truth that, of the fact of where 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 it all comes from in the first place, or at yeah. least I do. Mm -hmm. I say we, but I really mean <laughs> me. <laughs> so yo. When you were saying that about um, about getting out of the way, because I can really tell now when I'm writing whether I think I'm doing it or whether there's something else coming through me. Because I know that if I if I'm writing and I've got a really clear idea about what I want to write about and I start writing and I've done this a few times I start writing and then about halfway through I go nah <laughs> this is just not you know it's it just has nowhere near the the um the, the quality or the feel or you can I can just really tell the difference between when I think I know what I want to write about and I just allow something else to, to come through. I've got a, a chat here from somebody. Um, so I'm just, I'm just wondering if we open it up to, to see would, if anybody wants to. I was to just going to ask that. Yes, that's great. <laughs> Isn't that spooky? <laughs> 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 so what happens here, Bonnie, do we? So um, there is a hand raised. So. Uh, are you ready? To oh, I don't. I don't see it. No, I don't either. So, go ahead, Myrna. Hi, um, Maria. When you were talking about your sister, I could relate to that because I have a sister who seems to be sick all the time. And even if, let's say, she goes to one doctor and they give her medicine, she might be okay for a while. And then there is always something new that comes up. So she's always sick. And I guess she has chosen to be that without being aware of it. So when you say, you, you know, you try to point people in the right direction without really talking about the principles, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great question. <laughs> well, let, I, I'll just speak about um, what what I saw in relation to my family, because I'm, I'm the oldest of six children, and I've always been the one responsible for my siblings. Like growing up, I was the one who looked after them. And over the years, like, if they were having any troubles, I would have major, major worries about them. You know, it'd be me that'd be trying to fix them and sort out um, what's, what's going on for them or help them to, to see something. And I did, when I first came across the principles, I did try and talk to, to my family about it, but there was something, what I realized was that I was trying to tell them something to try and get them to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that wasn't working for me. <laughs> it wasn't, the message wasn't getting across. So somewhere along the line, I realized that that wasn't working. And so I would just rely on 
whenever it felt appropriate in the moment to say something, I would do. And, and, and in the meantime, they've gone through some, some quite serious stuff because one of my sisters has lost her husband, my, another sister has uh, marriage has split up and they've gone through some really, really painful, serious stuff for them. But I think the re because I have been able to help them, I have been able to be there for them. What I haven't done is educated them about the principles. Mm -hmm. And what I really know that even in the depths of their pain, I know that they're okay underneath it. And, and because I know that they're okay underneath it, I know that I don't have to worry so much about all the mm. stuff that it looks like they're going through. And, and I, hear, I hear snippets from my, from my sisters. Um, I've got one sister in particular now who does some, um, she does the video editing for us now. So she does to the principal stuff. But if I was to ask her about the principal, she doesn't, she would say, oh no, it just all goes over my head. You know, I don't, I don't know anything about the principle. <laughs> but you know, some things, she'll just say something sometimes. And I go, she knows this. I see that she knows this, even though she doesn't know that she knows it. And so for me, it's been more about knowing that they're not broken, regardless of anything that's happening for them. And that's really, it, that's, it's liberating for me. And it's really lovely for me because I don't have to worry about them at all. Which is a big thing for me mm. because I did worry about them a lot. So do you mean to tell me that, let's say, if uh, they are feeling really down or, you know, somebody has just had a divorce, you're simply being there. Yeah. Uh, and just by being there and not thinking, oh, she's going through the, you know, without putting any thoughts into her situation. Yeah. That's helping all by itself. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we really, really underestimate the value of just being with somebody mm. without saying anything, just being there in love with them. Mm -hmm feeling for them, really feeling for them, um, but not being pulled into. There's, there's been times when I've kind of thought that maybe I'm a little bit heartless because I'm not <laughs> dragged into the, the experience that they're experiencing. But, but, that, it, but that's just not, it's just not the case. But I think we really do underestimate the value of just being with somebody while they're going through the, the emotional turmoil. So, for example, when you're saying that, um, I'm going to be talking about my sister again. If we talk about something and all of a sudden it becomes a little heavy, then she'll say, let's say, oh, now I'm getting a headache. So I don't have to try to say, oh, you know, calm down. It's just there. It's just having a headache and I just respect that. And that's her choice or she's just expressing that she's having a headache. Mm -hmm. Without having any pity or sympathy mm -hmm. or trying to make her feel good. Yeah. Can I, can I jump in? Yes, please. Um, I love the question. And, uh, um, and, uh, you know, I, and I don't really know exactly how to explain what I want to say, which is kind of cool too, I guess. Um, but it's, for me, it's, it's so beyond the words that we, that we say. I mean, I just, I just gave my, I just gave two different um, talks in Spanish, one online and then one with a group of people here in Colombia. And I don't, I don't speak very much Spanish. Um, I mean, I, I just don't, my, my vocabulary is pretty limited. <laughs> and, um, and the, and the one talk was probably three hours. And, um, and I remember at one point I was listening to, to this woman tell a story about herself and, and I kind of lost the thread of what she was saying. 
like the of the form, like what the what the details of the story was. But I didn't lose a thread about how painful the experience was for her. Like I felt that. Like I, I felt it really deeply. And I looked in her eyes and and um I did, like Marie was saying, I just I just had so much love for her. And and her experience was so I mean, I want to say so human. I mean, it was so like we all have experiences like that where we just we get roughed up by life seemingly and we you know it's I, here they say it's as muy duro like it's really tough it's t it's a tough time and uh, and where, where it's muy duro and and i and i felt that and i just all i had was compassion for her and i looked at her and i i knew she was going to be okay but i didn't say that i but i knew she was i mean she is okay right and and after she got done, she sat there for a minute and she apologized for crying. And then she looked over at me and she said, in Spanish, she said, but I'm okay, aren't I? She said, I'm okay. And then she looked at the other people in the room. She said, I'm okay. Even like this, I'm okay. And, and, and I, so I think we really, you know, the, the longer I've been in this conversation, the more I realize that the words are completely insignificant. And that the more I try, and the more responsibility I feel to help, the less able I am to, to actually be of service. And the more I listen and just allow that natural connection that exists to be the, to be the medium that I communicate with people with, um, at least I'm going to have a better time. I can't guarantee what anyone else does, <laughs> but at least I, I enjoy myself. And, and I always, if there's anything to say, it'll show up. And if not saying anything is the best thing in that moment, that's what comes to me too. And it's just, it's just easier because the pressure's off me. You know, I, I just, I don't feel that kind of pressure anymore. And I, I know someone has something they want to share. I'll just share one more quick story. As I had one client who, I uh, was a sister of a, of a friend of mine and she um, was very troubled and she was um, a hypochondriac and really believed everything was bad for her. Like she rarely went outside and when she did, she, she went outside at night um, if she could. She, um, she even felt like she got radiation from headlights on cars. So she, so she blackened her windshield so she could see that lights were coming, but she couldn't really see the road. I mean, it was, she slept in her bathtub at night because, um, the, the, cer the ceramic and the, and, and, and the, um, uh, the cast iron, she felt, well, it's like the only place that was safe enough for her to be so that these, all these electromagnetic fields weren't affecting her. You know, she, that was the world she lived in. And it was completely real to her. And everyone around her thought she was crazy. Everybody, like her family. That's why they called me. They're like, my sister's gone crazy. Can you talk to her? And I was like, sure. And I knew her from before she... Um, had this thinking and so the first time I visited with her I um actually each time I, I had a session with her it was in her apartment and in her bathroom and she was in her bathtub uh -huh. and 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 she was in her bathtub and the lights were off because the lights also created this field for her and and so at, for a moment when she said is it okay if we meet in the bathroom and I was like really and then I was like Oh, I've never, and I just thought, oh my God, this is so cool. I've never met in a bathroom before. Why not? You know, like I just sort of went with what her experience was. And, and the more normal I saw her, the more, the less crazy I saw her, kind of the less wild she got with her talking and thinking. Now, I don't take responsibility for that, but it's sort of like she didn't have anything, her thinking and her ego and her ideas didn't have anything to push against. Because I just listened. I just listened. I just loved her. I didn't care. You know, sure, she was having crazy thoughts. And at one point she said, you know, do you think I'm having crazy thoughts? And I said, of course, just like me. You know, like, because that's what we do is we have thinking and we believe it's real and, and it's not. And that is by definition, I think, you know, when you're thinking something's real in the world and it's not and you're running away from it, that's a little crazy. But it makes perfect sense. And so I feel like that's kind of what Marie was talking about, is that when we just show up for another human being, we, we're given what we need in the moment to be of service to where they are. And we don't, it's impossible to lose anything when we do that. It's impossible, like, because we're just more filled. We're more alive. We're more present. We're more, we're more than us. We're more than it's not personal. 
when I when so, I listen to you now, one thing that came to my mind was this: when I'm with my sister, or perhaps with any somebody else, what's going on is that I'm labeling. That's what's happening. I'm labeling the person, uh, and I suppose that's what keeps me from being present, because I see the living. That's my my thoughts. I'm already saying, oh, she's sick, or she's really not thinking about getting better, or, you know, these thoughts. I'm labeling without realizing it. And when you're talking, I, I see and hear that you're not labeling at all. Mm. You're just being there. And so whatever craziness this person has, like you said, there's no, it doesn't stick to the label because there's no label. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the crazy club, right? Yeah. I'm a member. Yeah. Mine, just does, mine just doesn't look like hers. That's yeah. Me. One of the things that I realized last year is that you don't, you don't know what's going to show up that is going to be in service to somebody. And we had a, um, we had a, a, a close family member die over, over a period of seven months last year. And I had it in my mind, this is one of the insights about it was, I had to help this person make the transition, you know, that it was my responsibility because I understood the principles. And, and it's kind of like life showed me that that's not, that hadn't got that intention for me. And, um, and made it impossible for me to be there to help this person for a period of time. And then, then when I, I turned up and I'd had, I'd had an insight about that, about, oh, right, so it's not me. Like the intelligence of life brings the support that is needed to a person, but it doesn't necessarily do it through me. That's not my responsibility. And then when, um, when I was well enough to go back and be with that person, there was a moment when um, the thing that I had to do in the moment to be of service was to wipe her nose. And that felt massive <laughs> at the moment. So we, we just don't know. We think, it's like Andy was saying earlier, we think some, we can get kind of hooked in the idea that it's the words, it's the way that we talk to people, it's what we say that is gonna make the difference. But we just don't know what it is that's gonna make the difference. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> but it does, you know, it does require um, letting go of any, any, I mean, well, obviously we can't let go of any idea of control we have because once it's present, it's there. But, but I know, I mean, I know enough now to know that um, it's out of my hands, you know, it's all out of my hands. I don't, it's just, I have, I, right now I have an opportunity to, to sit here and listen and if something shows up that seems um, like I, I ought to say it, then I'll just do that. And that's kind of how it is for me. It's, that's how it is for me with the client. It's how it is for me when I'm at my best as a parent. And it's not how it is when I'm at my worst as a parent. You know, it's how it is when I'm on the subway. It's how, it's just like, that's all there is, is we just get to relax into being and then, and then we, we kind of are given things to do. And it's a lot easier. It takes so much of the pressure off. So much of the pressure off. <laughs> does that resonate? I mean, does that resonate with people? I, 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 I don't, I can't. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I also wanna say that if anything I say kind of rubs you the wrong way or sounds crazy or doesn't seem true, um, I mean, I would recommend you to just let go of it because it probably wasn't true or, or I was probably saying it in a way where my words and your hearing just created something different than what I was looking at, which is kind of the nature of all of this, right? We're trying to describe something with words that words can't possibly 
can't possibly come close to describing. So we're sort of just looking in the direction of it, you know, like it's, it's like, it's like um, I used to lead wilderness trips a lot. And, and, and when you're teaching people to navigate at night, at least in, in, you know, in the Northern hemisphere, you often use the North star because if it's clear, it's, it's an obvious star and, and it's to the North. And if you generally go towards it, you end up going North, which is really handy to have at night. Um, but, but you don't really expect to ever get to the North star. Right? It's a, like, it's a direction. And then, and, and so I feel like these words are kind of like that too. And I mean, and I feel like Sid, he said that all the time. I, I think every single time I heard him speak publicly, which was probably 20 times at least more, he always at some point, at least one time, if not 20 times would say, please don't, don't listen to me. Don't pay attention to my words and don't believe anything I say. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in, in some form or another, he would say that over and over again, because there are words are, are a product of the thing that we're trying to talk about, you know, like they're, they're not really capable of describing that from which they came any more than my iPhone is able to describe me. It's a really handy tool. It's amazing. Like, Oh my gosh, I can navigate with it. I can call people. I could do this on it if I wanted, but, but it's not really good for say making decisions in my life or, Parenting, it's really not very good at parenting. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's very limited because it's, it's downstream from me, right? And my words are downstream from, from the source from which they came, which was before me. It's the same source from which I came. It's the same intelligence flowing through all things at all times. And um, so if my words don't work, sorry. <laughs> um, that's the deal. Uh, and, 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 you know, that, that also reminds me, Sid uh, talked about describing how he had an argument with the publicist of, um, of The Missing Link when he was publishing that book. The publicist said, um, called him in, and he said, Sid, I just love your work and what you're trying to do and everything. He said, but I can't publish a book with so few words on each page. And Sid said something to the effect of, well, what you don't understand is it's the space between the words that's most important. He said, if you can't publish this book with more space than there are words, I'm going to have to have it published by someone else because you're missing the point. And then, and he, and, and then the, and the guy sat there, I guess, for quite a while and finally just threw his hands up and said, fine, and he printed it. And because, you know, that it's, again, it's not about the words. It's about what they're kind of where they're leading us. I think also as well, what you're saying um, reminds me that for me, it's like trying to use words to describe wholeness kind of separates me from experiencing wholeness. Because <laughs> once, I, once I get into trying to think about it and trying to work it, work it out mm -hmm. and, and, and know what it is it's like a, it, it it feels like i'm not saying that it's true but it feels like i'm separated from it because the, it's it's not it and 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 really the only time when i really experience it it, it <laughs> wholeness is when i'm not talking about it mm. but like i said yesterday um that may not be true tomorrow <laughs> for me <laughs> because I, I've also seen so many things that one day I thought this is true and then another day it, it shifts slightly and that's the that's the thing that I really love about a the, the, the bad news is I'm never ever going to get to the bottom of this understanding but the good news is that there's so much more to get to 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 kind of understand and every time I see something different it just just makes my life better and better I mean my life is brilliant <laughs> now, you know <laughs> I have an amazing life and I never could have 
never could have imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing now. It, I never would have imagined that I would be doing this kind of, this with webinar tonight. Um, I could never have planned and made that happen. And one of the things that I love, I absolutely love reflecting on is when I look back over my life and the times in my life when I see that something guided me without me knowing and realizing that it was guiding me and has brought me to such a fantastic place. And even those times when it didn't seem as if it was working out that well. When I look back on that now, I see how it was working out perfectly. Mm. And more and more I'm seeing, I read a book just recently called um, My Adventures with God uh, by a guy called Stephen Tobolowski or something like that. And he, there's a, a, a chapter in there about whether a curse is a blessing or seeing curses as a blessing. And more and more I'm seeing how things that don't look as if they're, they're particularly um, good in inverted commas, or that look as if they're particularly negative. I know that at some point in the future, I'm going to reflect on that time and see that it was actually a blessing and not a curse. Because I've seen it so many times now in the past. What I thought was a curse became a blessing. And, and also I, in that, the conversation, Myrna, about my family, like seeing how this painful thing that they're going through may not be the curse that I think it is or that they mm. think it is. I'm, I'm wondering if anyone else has anything um, they'd like to share or questions or... Um, yeah, there's, or, or thoughts. there's Patricia. I don't know Patricia, if she's on, but I'm going to unmute. I think she left, yeah. Did she come back at all? Um, Patricia, are you there? You're unmuted if you're there. No, I guess not. Anyone else? <laughs> Myrna? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, if anybody else wants to speak, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I can ask a question. You Please. started this uh, webinar with the word wholeness, and then you said that your daughter said, Oh, uh, it means nothing's broken because it's whole. Uh, uh, and Maria spoke about feeling like, you know, somehow we're broken, but then she doesn't feel that way anymore, although sometimes it may come back. Does it mean that at some point you or Maria felt this brokenness and in order to get out of it, you had to shake hands with it or it doesn't even come up at all? Oh no, it comes up. I mean, I think the, for me, the habit of thinking like that is, um, is, more present sometimes than I would like to admit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but it means to me, you know, once I, once I began to see through the veil of my experience, that once I began to see that, as I saw that my experience was being created by me from the inside out, I, I, it, 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 it become, became less possible to blame the world for how I was feeling past or present it, you know it, it became clear to me that like I had a habit of thinking that like if someone mistreated me that that had something to do with me and that I should have a certain feeling because someone did something you know that the, all the equations that were taught all the social equations that were taught that we learned innocently about how to feel when th certain things happen and the feelings are just neutral I mean I mean, I guess ultimately it came, came down to, for me now, is like I'm much less afraid of the experience I'm having than I ever was before. Whether it's a really profoundly good experience or, or I'm in really deep pain about something, like that's all okay. That's all part of the human experience. And so I, I don't see it as, um, none of it is as sticky anymore. It's just what I'm experiencing in the moment. 
it's not deciding who I am in the future because that's not possible. Whereas I grew up thinking that like things that happened to me actually made me who I am today. Right. I mean, we have, there's a lot of thinking about that of like that, that, that these experiences make us who we are. And, and the truth is we're new every, every moment. We're absolutely completely fantastically unbelievably unimaginably brand new every second we have to be because that's how life works it's like it's what shows up in this second in my head is it's 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 new it's now there's no other it, it works like that now once i saw that for me there was just freedom from the past that doesn't mean all my habits of thinking, I, you know, I still have insecure habits of thinking. I still get caught up in things sometimes. My ego shows up. I wanna be good at things. I mean, I still have habits like that, but I just sort of see them more as like, once I'm clear of them, you know, once I wake up a little bit of them, once I, once I zoom out and see things from a little bit more philosophical perspective, I, I don't really care that I have those experiences. They don't really matter. They're just experience. Just like it's like I I broke my foot a month ago here, um, bad, and I and it was like and it hurt a lot and um, and it was just pain though. You know, it was like I don't know how to explain it. It was like it was just a bunch of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's gonna eventually the pain's gonna subside, and in the meantime, I'm still gonna live my life and do fun things, and um, it's just gonna hurt a little bit while I do it. So is that it. It, it sort of does, it's just another experience that I'm manufacturing, that's being manufactured in the moment via this amazing capacity I have to think and to have experience. And so the less attention I pay to the like personal thinking I'm doing, the more present I am for the experience I'm having. So the word really is attention. If a thought comes to you that, you know, sometimes you say, oh, I was so stupid. Why did I do that? And I hurt myself. So if that thought enters your mind, then I suppose you, you just say, oh, yeah, it's just a thought. And I don't have to. Or I don't. And I say, damn, my foot really hurts right now. That was dumb. You know, like I don't, whatever shows up in my head is what shows up. That's what I get. I don't get to pick, you know, like. I, I get to pick how much I feed it, maybe. I get to pick whether I act on a thought. But in my experience, I don't get to pick my thoughts. Like, it's a stream. It's sort of like standing. I have, there's this, we live in Vermont, and we have this beautiful little river that runs by our house. And I was, I think, I don't know if I was talking to Maria about this or if it was someone else the other day, but I look at the river, and I think of it as a thing. Like, it's the same river all the time until I stand in it. And the moment I stand in the river, I realize every second it's a new river, right? Mm. Like it's different water. It's different everything. Like the only thing that's the same is my thinking about it. But when I really get in that river, I can feel that it's ever changing in every second, you know? And, but I, I don't have a lot of control about what's coming downstream in that river. So if someone throws, you know, a McDonald's wrapper upstream, that's going to pass by me. Now, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't get to decide what's in my stream, what shows, what shows up in my head. Yes. I don't get to. Somehow, that just shows up. It's beyond my, I don't know. I, you know, that's my edge. I don't know how that works. But I know that it does. And I guess I'm just less afraid of what shows up now. So when I have insecure thinking, um, I, I, it's, I don't get as freaked out by it. Or maybe not for as long. Or if I if I'm troubled by events in the world and I get down because like, you know, like we're, God, it's so tough here. We're, you know, we're in Colombia and there's hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans fleeing Venezuela right now, leaving with nothing. I mean, like the streets are packed with people walking, carrying their babies and their grandparents and like their friends who are sick in wheelbarrows. And it's like, you know, it's heartbreaking to see people when there's so much we have in the world to see people that need so little not be able to get it, it like, you know, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Like it just opens me up so much. And, and, um, 
that's a that's like a feeling of love a really beautiful feeling of love that i have like right now but sometimes that same feeling might show up or that same thinking and I, and i'll feel like i'm not doing enough and I, you know i'll start to get into a into a bad feeling about it yes. like there's something wrong versus oh what can i do to be of service and now when i start to get like that once i notice it i'm just like oh there i go again wow. that, you know i that's just what i do sometimes no big deal it's like it's like stubbing my toe or a cloud going in the sky. That's what happens. Clouds come by. I don't have to make a big deal because a cloud came by. That's what happens. Clouds come by. That's what happens. Thoughts show up and I experience them as real. And, and that's not completely, that's not in my choice. That's, that's how I'm designed to work. That's how, how, that's how life shows up to me as a, as a, you know, as a, as a semi form of intelligent life. And, you know, cause I, I yeah, that's just how it works. I don't know if that helps, but. Yes, it does. For me, it's like when, when I, when I noticed that I've caught up in that, because I used to be the, like the world's best at finding fault with myself. That was well, my go-to was to, to find fault with myself. Um, and, and when I notice that I've got caught up in some of that thinking, it's like, oh, it's that old chestnut. But it's not, <laughs> um, it doesn't necessarily make it go away. And that's okay. Whereas before it would have been, oh God, it's that old chestnut and now I've got to do something to, to, to pass. And it's like now it's like, oh, it's that old chestnut. I can see it for what it is. Okay, I'm just going to have to live with it for the for the period of time that it's going to stay here and I know that at some point it'll go and without me realizing all of a sudden I realize oh it 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 went somewhere it's gone it's like that it's like that river that Andy was talking about that it, it it's just it's just gone so it's not because I could have really when, when I first started to understand the principles, I used to think that because I, because I knew the principles, I shouldn't have any of this thinking. I shouldn't, shouldn't have this finding fault, this criticism. I shouldn't have this insecurity or this fear or this anxiety or this resentment or this um, frustration or whatever it was that I was having. You know, like I thought that if I understood the principles, then I would feel whole the whole time. Um, <laughs> Um, and realizing that being whole the whole time doesn't mean that you don't have all of these experiences. And, and there is, I mean, Sid says it, if the only thing that you realize is not to be afraid of your own experience. I, I mean, it's massive. I didn't get that to start off with, but it's massive. Because you can have, a, you can have an experience. But, and what it seems to me like now is that I can see the experience and I can feel the experience, but I'm not, I'm not the experience. I'm not the experience. So if I'm listening, what comes to me, to my mind is this, you can only know, well, you can experience wholeness because you know what broken means. So mm -hmm. if you, if you were broken at one point or feel you know, those broken thoughts, we wouldn't know what wholeness is. So we, I, I guess I understand now that without having to intellectualize or anything and to accept being broken is just as good as knowing what it feels to be whole. Mm. Because like you said, Andy, uh, those thoughts come and go you have no control over them. Whatever thoughts come in, they come in. But you're able to shrug it off without denying it. But you know it's there, but you can still be okay. So I guess you're experiencing both wholeness and brokenness without the brokenness getting into the wholeness or something like that. I should stop <laughs> putting too many words now. <laughs> But it just came to me. Yeah. yeah. 
something that Mr. Lindsay really recent for me was uh, is if everything is the intelligence of life it's like no matter what it is everything is the intelligence of life working and so um you know i had a recent tailspin where i had a real massive moment of insecurity and anxiety and fear and and um I'll tell you what happened because I think it's easier to explain what happened. So I'm writing this book and I was asking for some feedback and this person who I barely knew offered to, to give me some feedback and I knew that he'd read my previous book and my new book is nothing like my previous book and it's more academic and he's a bit, of an, he's a bit academic and I went into this whole tailspin about uh, uh, what's he going to think of it, what's he going to make of it, it's not academic, it's so contra not contrary but it's so different to that and and he's not going to like it and he's going to give me really terrible feedback and really kind of i was ready to throw the towel in i wasn't going to write this book anymore and all, all this kind of thing um but i knew that i was experiencing all of that so i also not to reply to him in the moment it was by email so it's easy to not reply as well so I didn't reply to him in the, in the moment and the following morning I was writing because I write most mornings and the thought came to me, what if, what if that is the intelligence of life too? What if his offer <laughs> is the intelligence of life? And I tell you something, it spun, it spun me like that. It was like 360 degrees immediate and all of a sudden I was like, yes. Because even if he tells me it's the worst thing in the world, it's like the most terrible writing ever. It's just a load of crap. All it will be <laughs> is that he will just be telling me something that maybe somebody else might experience as well. And then I'll be ready for that when it happens. So it was like, if, if and, and everything is the intelligence of life, then, then it, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm a bit yet to be tested on this and, and actually please, please don't test me intelligence of life really badly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, the intelligence of life has, has thrown some real curveballs um, in the not too recent past. And, and every one of them have turned out at some point to have been a blessing. I think, you know, if there's this, there's this, I don't always do this, but there's this point where where I started spending less time wishing things were different. Because mm. they can't be. Things are. You know, it's like, I mean, Sid, Sid would talk about the isness and the allness. And like when he first, when he first started saying stuff like that, I was just, you know, it was just, I, I mean, I really... I didn't get anything he was talking about. And I think, you know, now as I look at it more and as I listen to him now, I feel like there is the, there's just an, ex, it's not even an acceptance. It's like an honoring or it's a like, it's, it's honesty about what it is right now. Like there, it, life could not be different than it is in this moment because it is in this moment. There is no, there's no, at least in my experience, there's no alternative life to this one. You know, I know there's like thread, there's string theory, there's all that, we're not gonna get into that, but like the, 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 this experience I'm having in this instant is the one I'm having in this instant. There's no other experience to be had, except for now in this instance, right? That, that's the beauty of it is that it's the stream. It's like there's the new experience then is always going to come because every second, every millisecond, every new thought creates a new experience and 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 as i as i see the truth of that it allows me to sort of be more honest with my experience without getting too shaken by it mm -hmm. yeah so if someone doesn't like something i did or if my words impact someone in a way that i don't intend i can apologize for that but i can't really i can't undo it mm -hmm. but i can just be really honest about it and and have that experience and have compassion and learn from it. And, and I feel like the more we, the more I do that, um, the more I learn, the quicker I learn um, lessons that I thought I learned a long time ago, you know, um, 
the less the less attention I give the idea that I have to be good at everything or that I have to say the right things that I have to do the right things or that I have to be a certain way. Um, and, um, and it just takes the pressure off because pressure is an illusion. Like pressure doesn't exist in the world. There's only one place where pressure exists. I mean, that the kind of pressure I'm talking about, mental pressure, and that's, it's self-manufactured. It doesn't, it's not, you know, people think, you know, like, because I work a lot with athletes, and they're like, oh, it's the finals of a big tournament. There's a lot of pressure. That, that's just not true. That's a made-up idea. A lot of people believe it, so it looks real. Like, if everybody around you believes something, like, say, the earth is flat, it's pretty easy to believe that, right? Because it seems true because everyone believes it. But there's a lot of things that aren't true that almost everyone believes. Um, like we're a product of our experience or, um, or feeling down is bad. You know, that's one that I struggled with. I, when I, when, as I first got into this conversation, I thought I was supposed to somehow use this understanding to feel better much more of the time. Now the truth is that happened but it was sort of against my, um, it happened regardless of what I was doing to try and make it happen. <laughs> like the more I tried to feel better, the less present I was for the experience I was having. You know, it's just like the more in my head I was, the more I looked for insights, you know, like I was like, oh, I have to go out and get more insights so I can be deeper and have a deeper experience. Well, good luck with that. It doesn't really work. I mean, my experience, like mining for insights, that's like, that's, that's like looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, like, it's like looking for someone else to make you happy. That's not how it works. It can't, it doesn't, you know, the game doesn't work like that. It's an inside out gig, always. I'm just looking at the time now because it's quarter past eight. I'm not sure we're we supposed to be on for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this conversation though. So um, I'm, if there's anyone else who has a question, I'm, I'm happy to stay a little longer if the two of you have the time. And if not, we can, we can wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Is, is there anyone else? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this was... Uh, this was really lovely. I really enjoyed listening to the two of you chat. As Thank George, you. just us girls having coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think Patricia just said she has something to say. Oh, she's back. Oh, okay. back. okay, let me um... Yes, I'm back. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> Um, so this might be complete. I'm, I'm sorry. For, first of all, like my camera is not working for some weird reason. Um, but when we first started, I, I got this, the, the topic about wholeness. And, um, of course I, you know, my first thought was, yes, I'm whole. I get, I'm whole. <laughs> you know, I, I'm me, I'm whole, but I was getting, I had this like weird sensation going on that was coming from within. It wasn't coming from my head. And then I was like, okay, what's this? And I, what was coming to mind was, um, it's not just about me being whole now, it's incorporating all of who I've been. Like there is no time in there. So even the things that I, you know, don't, you know, quote, unquote, don't like about myself or things that I think I've overcome, you know, I'm not like that anymore, you know, passive or gullible or, you know, I mean, just to name a few things, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that I think in my, you know, when I, when I, when I wake up in the morning and I say, okay, this is who I am. I bring this presence of me, but it's not all of me who I'm bringing. I, I get it. Like you were saying, Andy, uh, you know, if you have to give that much thought to it, then it's not really, it, it's, you know, if there's that much thought going behind who am I, then it's not, I'm, be, I'm making it up. You know, I'm kind of making it up. Mm. Um, so 
really, this is really more about me than it is about coaching others, <laughs> but, you know, but it kind of goes hand in hand because, for sure. you know, I'm looking at like, I'm ha you know, I'm having some, look at my husband for one thing, you know, I'm saying, boy, he really needs to, uh, he really needs to improve in these areas, you know, geez, I'm going to give him a chance to improve. <laughs> And you know, and I'm thinking, oh my God, <laughs> what am I thinking? You know, at the same time, I'm doing that. Uh, you know, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, feedback, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Limited. No, I love that. I mean, yeah, and I, and I, you know, it's like, again, anytime, anytime we say something, it's easy, it's easy to kind of run with it somewhere that I, I wasn't necessarily pointing, but I feel like you, you know, I, I really love what you had to say. And, you know, when I, when I think of wholeness, I don't mean that like everything I do is right or good or perfect or like the best thing. I just mean before, before thought, before before thought, before insecure thinking, before personal thinking, before ego, um, that, 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 that infinite reservoir of intelligence from which all that, that ability arises, that can't be damaged. That's the whole, like we're whole, we're that. We are that reservoir. We just make up this identity like this thing that I call Andy, that because it looks like a form, and we know that form isn't really what we think it is. We know scientifically, but we kind of have to live in a world as if if I run into the wall, it's going to hurt because that's how we're built, even though we know it's largely not true. And this is kind of like that: is like this temporary form that exists before you now, and that I describe as Andy, the 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 the, the, the 2019 version that happens to be here in this moment. That is um, a product of a greater wholeness. Like that's part of and a product of this greater wholeness that I'm talking about. This intelligence that allows me to even be is, is, is um, contains everything there ever was and ever will be. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it precludes time as well. Yeah, it's yeah. Time has nothing to do with any of it. I mean, to me, at least, I I don't really get time except. Well, like I mean, past, I just past right. I'm yeah. talking about or future, or you know, anticipation of the future, fear, insecurity of what might happen, you know, dying, any of those things that like. Yes, I would say so. Mm -hmm. And that whole is just is that there can't be a separate me. There can't be a damaged me, but I can have thinking because I have this capacity to, uh, you know, I have this inescapable ability. <laughs> um, my superpower, like yours, is to create my experience moment to moment. Um, I, I, we all have it, and, but I don't, um, but, but, but it doesn't, and it always works out somehow or another, but it's not always pretty in the moment, right? Right. It's just, like sometimes I do act out of insecurity. Sometimes I, I'm not as kind to my daughter and as compassionate as I'd like to be. Sometimes I'm not as kind to my wife as I would like to be. Sometimes I, I get selfish and, and, and all that. And that's all okay. That's just like, that's what shows up in the moment. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I go there for, for the, I mean, in honest truth, I go there for some period of time and then, and until something else shows up on the menu that looks a little more inviting. And, and then I pick that, you know, then that, you know, like, and, but as soon as that's the case, that, then as soon as something else shows up that, that seems better, it means I'm not in that, I'm not in that stuck place anymore. I'm not, I'm not in my insecurity because from there, I, I don't really see any other way, but none of that is me. See, like that the wholeness I'm talking about is, is the place where all of my experience comes from. It's the like, I mean, I think of, when I think of wholeness, you know, I can't help but think of um, Dr. Bill Pettit, who I just, like, Bill Pettit looks at me and I cry because, <laughs> because 
like the way that he sees human beings and the amount of health, like the perfect health he sees in everyone is just stunning to me. And, you know, all the stories I've heard him say about sitting with people who are schizophrenic and have been in hospitals for years, you know, like years, and how at some point he just talks to them like they're everybody else or he listens to them or he just hangs out with them. And at some point or another, some of some folks hear, see, whatever you want to call it, feel something he's saying about the fact that they're still healthy inside. They just don't think they are. And it breaks, it like blows apart, it cracks the ideas they had about themselves so that what's true beneath their insecurity, what's true that, so that love and connection, which is really what we are, beneath, before our personal thinking, to me, there's nothing but complete connection and love to everything, like lack of separateness, wholeness. And it's only through our capacity to think sometimes that we create this illusion of being separate. We, we create this illusion of being damaged. Or we create this illusion that we're not enough. Or this illusion that the world should be different than it is. And then we're, we're fighting against something we created right? Like you can't win that. There's no winning that because it's like you create the, you create the enemy, but that's all an illusion. So as long as you keep fighting that, there's no, there's no winning. And once we just see, oh, that's innocently what we do sometimes. That's innocently what every human being does sometimes. Then we can let go more and and rest more easily in the fact that we have this profound capacity, this amazing ability to create our experience moment to moment and just see what shows up and kind of get tickled by it all. Even the less than um, lovely parts. Yeah. So that's what I mean by whole. <laughs> <laughs> what, what just occurred to me literally this, this second occurred to me one of one of our clients emailed me just recently and um she's been reading the um uh, relationship handbook uh, by uh, george pransky and she said <laughs> um, it was the middle in the middle of the night and she was asleep and her husband was snoring and um and she said normally like she gets really really annoyed about his snoring and she said I looked at him and I went, oh, lovely, he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a, such a surprise to her to have that kind of thought about his snoring because normally she has so much awful thinking about his snoring. Um, but it's like she didn't make that happen. Mm. Like, yeah. Um, and it, and it's like you just see something and it changes the way that you are and, and so many people talk about that they suddenly find themselves being different in a situation um, compared to how they know, know they would have been different before um, and it and it you don't you don't make it happen you can't mm -hmm. make it happen it just um, yeah and your desire for it to happen won't make it happen either <laughs> so it's like um, even to the point of i mean i don't i don't choose to be sharp with people generally um, i had a recent experience where i was really sharp with a friend of mine and as a result of this sharpness, we both got a huge insight. And, and you know, I was, the, I was the first to apologize because she's such a dear friend. I don't want to, I don't want to upset her, but, but we both really saw something um, in what happened. So, so, so again, it comes back to like, everything is, everything is okay. I wouldn't choose to be sharp generally, but it's happened, it's done. I can't do anything about it. 
but the intelligence of life works in just such mysterious ways. You can't, I think it's like, I don't consciously look for the intelligence of life in what happens, but I know that that's the direction I'm looking in these days. More so than, because I could have got really caught up in criticizing and judging myself for having been sharp with her. And I would have had no shift in understanding if I'd have stayed in that thinking. Um, so, so more and more, I, I, don't, I don't tend to go there, although I do sometimes. Um, but it's, it's almost like, the intelligence of life pulls me into seeing it. I told you I just love these conversations. <laughs> oh, I really want to thank you both so much and for the extra time that you gave us. This was really, really beautiful. Thanks. It was a, it was a great pleasure. And thanks for, thanks for spending some time with us, everyone. It was, um, mm. it was really nice. And Maria, um, thank you so much. It was really, it's always such a great pleasure sitting with you and hearing hearing what you're seeing. And um, I just feel really grateful that we've become such close friends and uh, you know, that, that, that you and Ash uh, entered, entered my life not that long ago and it feels like you've always been there. So, cause I think you probably always have. <laughs> <laughs> cause we're not separate. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Bonnie, for hosting. Yes, thanks, Bonnie. I really Bonnie. appreciate that. I really, really appreciate the, the questions and the, mm. and the contributions. And, and I know that, um, you know, I've said things this evening that I've not heard myself say before. Um, and it's really been sparked by the questions and the, and the conversation. So thank every, everybody so much just for being in this, in this place. Yeah, and um, just to let you all know, the next webinar is May 15th, and it's with Wendy Sajasi, so hopefully we'll see you live then. And uh, thank yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Love to you all. <laughs>